Hey there, my name is Mike Amsel, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can edit your photos in Lightroom without any presets. Now, before I get into today's video, let me just say this. It uh, feels good, it feels good to be back in front of the camera. I've taken uh, the last several months away from YouTube, just haven't been making any videos, and uh, it's it's been good, it's been nice to kind of get away, to focus on some other areas of life, uh, if you haven't noticed already, but we, we moved into a new apartment, and so uh, as things are kind of slowing down for me now, I feel uh, ready to get back in front of the camera and put out some videos for you all, which by the way, let me just say, I really do appreciate um, just all of all of you who have reached out and just asked kind of how I'm doing and and uh, whatnot. I, I really do appreciate you guys and appreciate all the support. But hey, let's get into today's video. Now, full disclosure, uh, my wife and I we do use custom presets of our own when we edit photos, and especially if you know we're doing some kind of portrait session or a wedding or anything like that. Presets are really really helpful to you know edit quicker faster and it helps maintain a consistent look at least for us that we're going for but maybe you don't have any presets maybe you're new to photography or new to editing your photos um, let me just say you have nothing to be afraid of you have nothing to be intimidated about and today i'm going to show you some really really easy techniques that you can use and hopefully apply to your own photography and hopefully help you to create your own personal look. So anyways, with all that being said, let's hop into Lightroom and I'll show you how. All right, so here we are in Lightroom and I've got three photos uh, ready for us to edit down in the bottom. And let me just say, before we even get into the editing process, I cannot stress you enough how important it is to when you're shooting uh, your photos to uh, correctly expose and to correctly have your white balance. Obviously you can change all of that um, in Lightroom in post-production, but it's so much easier when you nail it in camera first. But anyways, with that being said, let's kind of get into the editing process here. Now, I'm not gonna go over all the different tools in Lightroom. Uh, I'm sure you can find that in other videos, but I just wanna show you my personal editing process, what I do and why I do it. So the first thing I start off with is I always enable profile corrections. Now, right away, you can see it kind of changes the look a little bit. It goes from being unwarped to being more of a natural photo and there's a little bit of, an, of a vignette as well. It, it removed that. And a lot of times that's just due to the lens or um, you know, kind of something going on with the camera. So I always want to make sure before I change the color or the look or anything, I enable profile corrections to get a fresh start. Down here at the bottom um, is what's called the calibration. Now here's going to change a lot of your colors uh, from these tools right here. So I'll, for me personally, I like to have a little bit of a green tint in my shadows, not too much, but just, just a little bit. And I really like my red primary colors to be closer to the orange. I found that for skin tones, this helps out a lot. Yeah, about 58 looks good. Let's go to maybe about 10 on the saturation. Now, I know what you're thinking <laughs> right now, that, that looks a little strong, and I think it does as well. Let's pull that back down, maybe about 29 looks good there. For the greens, I like to push these more towards the green. That looks about right there. I'm gonna actually pull the saturation down on these to about there. And then in my blues, I like my blues to look a little bit more teal. And uh, you know, depending on what camera you're shooting, uh, you know, these colors might change when you're shooting a Canon versus Sony or Nikon or Panasonic or whatever it is that you're using. But uh, for me, with the Sony a7 III, uh, something like this already starts looking good for me. And let's just see the quick before, after. And you can see that it kind of changed the uh, tones going from more of a yellow to a bit more vibrant, a bit more orange, which I like that. And you can see that full before, after, before, after. Okay, now let's go up to the basic corrections. And right here, it's all just kind of, uh, you know, you kind of gotta just trial and error, 
depending on what photo, depending on what your photo is, you know, this might look different for each one. But typically for me, I like to bring my highlights down a bit, get some more detail in those highlights, bring my shadows up, my blacks up a bit. And then I like to have a little bit of punchiness to my photos. And for me, that's always, uh, I've always been able to do that with boosting my whites. I'm gonna bring the contrast down just a bit. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I'm gonna add some more contrast here in a second with the tone curve. Dehaze, I like to throw just a bit in there. So let's say five, my clarity, negative one. And then I like to pull the, the sharp, uh, excuse me, the vibrance and the saturation down just a bit. And again, for each photo, this might change here and there. Uh, but you know, in a gen for a general rule, this is what I like to do. Let's just see a quick before and after. That's before any edits. This is after. Doesn't look great yet, but it's looking better than it did in the raw image. Might pull the shadows up just a bit more. All right. Now, here's the tone curve. And again, I'm not going to explain you know, the entire science behind this tone curve, but let me just tell you, uh, this for me is where all the magic happens. This, this tone curve will completely change uh, your image. And, and the more you can learn from this, the better. So first things first, uh, make sure, I mean, you can, you can do it this way, but I like to have my tone curve um, in this way. So we've got our whites and our highlights up here, our midtones right here, shadows and blacks on this side of the line. This line just going straight like, like, the, like it is, this is saying that all of our values are at zero. So if you go above this line, you're bringing more, deep, you're bringing more uh, information into that area. And if you go below the line, you're bringing less information into that area. So I'm going to do a very uh, subtle, but still kind of standard S curve. And this is gonna bring just a bit of contrast into our image. Let's see before and after the tone curve. Wow, look at that. And just, just with a very, very simple S curve, you can see the skin tones are popping more. The, the sky looks a lot better. Just overall, everything looks to me a lot better so far. Now that's all I'm gonna do. I might bring the blacks up, just kind of fade them a little bit more. I kind of like the faded black look. But so now here's what I don't see a lot of people on YouTube talking about, but I actually like to go into each individual channel. So we just, we just did the entire RGB curve all together at once, but you can actually go into the red channel, the green channel and the blue channel and, and control just those colors in the image, which is exactly what I like to do. So here, and trust me, this is gonna take a lot of practice to get used to it, but uh, I already know that I like to get, bring a little bit of reds into the highlights and midtones, not too much. I like to take out some of the reds in the shadows. Bring this down a bit. Bring that down a bit. So basically what I've done here is that I've introduced more red information into our highlights and, and midtones, which is gonna control mostly our skin tones and I've taken a lot of the red out of our blacks and our shadows. And uh, clearly right here, this image does not look good at all. So I have to go into each of the other panels here and start doing somewhat of the same thing to kind of uh, help and complement what I just did with the red curve. All right. So far, now, again, this image is far from complete, but right now I really like where the image is at. Let's just see a before and after of the tone curve. So that's before we did anything, that's after. So now you can see, I'm gonna have to go back in, I'm gonna bring the contrast down even further, maybe like negative 30, bring the saturation down, maybe just negative 10. 
bring those whites up just a bit more 40 highlights down I'm gonna bring these blacks up just a bit all right let's see a before after before after it's looking better it's not complete yet but it's looking better now we're gonna get into the HSL sliders, also known as hue, saturation, and luminance. Again, this is gonna drastically change the overall color of your image. And this is really, this can only um, be done through just loads of practice and trial and error. And like I said, for me, I've got somewhat of an idea of how I like my images to look. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start tweaking, uh, starting with all the different hues. And again, like I said, this is going to, this is gonna be different depending on what camera you're shooting on. There, there's not just a general rule for how these colors should look. It's a lot of it also has to do with personal preference as well. All right, that's just a really general base correction that I made with the HSL sliders. So let's see what we've done just with this panel. That's before, that's after. It's looking a little bit less saturated, a little bit more natural in my opinion, before and after. Perfect, I might just bring these yellows back a bit. There we go. I'm really liking the way this photo's turning out. Split toning, again, man, I, I'll tell you, pretty much everything that you do in Lightroom has such a big impact on the overall color and look of your image and split toning is very similar to that. So for me, uh, what I like to do is play around with this, but what I'm gonna do is introduce a little bit of kind of the orange and reds into the highlights. You can see what would happen if we went too extreme with that. Here's with nothing. I like to bring just a tad, just a little bit into the highlights. And again, with the shadows, very similar, just a tad. You can see it kind of warmed the image up a bit, which I think uh, better represents what this photo shoot looked like. We were shooting just before sunset, so you can see before is a little bit more cool. Afterwards, a little bit more on the warmer side. I like the way that looks. I could go deeper into that, but for the sake of this video, I'm not going to. Sharpening, I'm gonna bring the sharpening up to about 60. I'm gonna mask it which basically this means when you're masking or sharpening, if you have your mask at zero, everything in the image is going to be sharp. But if you, uh, if you bring your masking up, it's going to uh, focus more, it's going to sharpen more of the image of what's in focus and less what's out of focus. And a way that you can tell what is being sharpened is if you press the Alt button or Option, depending on what you're using, and now you go on masking, Everything that's kind of stenciled in white is what's going to be uh, more sharp. So make sure that kind of the foreground is more sharp. Perfect. And for me, I do like to add a little bit of grain in my images. So I'm gonna do just 25 on the amount, 25 on the size. Let's do 40 on the roughness. Um, or after I do like having grain and you can always throw a little vignette in if you like kind of brings even just a little bit more focus into on your subject so I'm gonna go negative 10 on the vignette and just like that oh let me straighten it just a tad and just like that uh, we have a edited image here's the before not too good <laughs> after a lot better before after and again we could continue to tweak this if we wanted to you could bring more saturation in if that's the look you're going for you could obviously bring it down a lot like you can you can do so much uh with lightroom it's it's honestly just ridiculous but uh for me this is i really like the image the way it's turned out so far and what i'm going to do is just to show you real quick i'm going to go ahead and save this as a preset and I'm gonna call this uh, tutorial preset and I'm going to keep yeah all of that checked 
create that preset. And I'm gonna go to one other photo and let's just see what happens if I put on a tutorial preset. Cool, looks really good. And again, I'd go, personally, if I did that, I'd go in here and I'd you know start changing some of it a bit. Try to get it to look a little bit more natural. But you get the idea, there is so much uh, that you can do in Lightroom without presets. And then once you finally uh, figure out a look that you enjoy and something that you wanna uh, maintain uh, for that consistent look, then you can go ahead and save that preset for later use. All right, and just like that, you can edit your photos in Lightroom without any presets. And you know, like I said at the beginning of the video, I know that using Lightroom can be really intimidating if you don't uh, you know, fully know what you're doing. And for me, I don't claim to be an expert or a pro or anything like that, um, but I have you know, used it for almost going on, I don't know, two years now. And so I, I've learned quite a bit in that time and I, I hope personally to continue learning because by no means is what I just showed you a, you know, a final a finished product or anything like that. I, I wanna consistently grow with how I edit my photos. So hopefully you learned something today. Hopefully you can apply uh, some of what I showed you into your own photos, into your own work and create a style for yourself that you are proud of. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I'm excited to continue to make videos and to put out content for you. So be on the lookout for the next one. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, what do you think? You've just been sleeping there the whole time, haven't you? Little floppy dog. Oh, come here. Come here. Oh. Say hi to the people. The people want to see you. They don't care about me. Say hi, people. Should, should we make more YouTube videos? What do you think? Do you want to go go outside and, and do more more videos or what? Do you care? Do you want to go outside? Okay. Say, see you later. See you later. Tune in to the next one. Subscribe. <laughs> Let's go.